Now, words such as blockchain and crypto are in danger of being overhyped, but I want to highlight how this technology is and will continue to change the world for the better and actually make it fit for a digital age and that Web 3.0 era. I also want people listening to think beyond their own geographical borders or continents. So to begin with, can you tell me more about how blockchain in Asia and the excitement behind this technology that's gathering at the moment? Absolutely. That is a fantastic question. I think Asia has been going through a very rapid, exciting phase through this couple of years when it comes to accepting and implementing new technologies. Uh, we'll see a rapid growth in anything that has to do with IoT, fintech, cashless payments, um, and obviously mobile penetration that kind of kicked this off. So the concepts behind blockchain technology as well as we know them are not new concepts, but the way they're being implemented and the way they're being structured these days are, are certainly new um, revolutionary, if you will, concepts. And I think when it comes to adoption and when it comes to having the right mindset, Asia has proven to be a leader in revolutionary technology. So if we're looking again at fintech and IoT and now blockchain, um, I think both the mindset and the mentality, as well as adoption and implementation to the masses. Again, we're looking at um, very large populations, and we also are looking at people that have and want to be on the front line when it comes to adopting new technologies. And I think the space, especially in blockchain, is so interesting when it comes to Asia. And we do see Southeast Asian countries really leading the space. If it's China, obviously, if it's Japan, if it's South Korea, Malaysia, and Indonesia that are becoming new hubs as well. We are seeing a lot of both developers and community interests um, coming from these countries. I think even looking back at 2015, uh, when I just first came to China, we saw mainstream media talk about blockchain technology. Now, at that time, I think mainstream media in the West wasn't as much focus on blockchain as as much as it was on AI and VR and fintech and what have you not. And the articles that were coming out on blockchain, I think, were more negative in a way. But I think mainstream media here in Asia uh, was very much excited about what was going on from an enterprise level, from um, different applications that were starting to pop up. And I think this also gave that big boost to the technology here in the region. Now, I've spoken on this podcast recently about how developing countries have traditionally been neglected and many seldom think about how much of the world has no access to things that many take for granted, such as access to a bank. So in your opinion, what role will blockchain play in developing countries? And can you also possibly help people listening visualize how it could actually reshape the world as we know it and for the better too? Absolutely. I think a lot of people in the industry, a lot of people in the global community are looking at blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies as a way um, to reach and help exactly these people out there in the world in developing countries. A lot of people like to use the phrase banking the unbanked when we're talking about developing countries. Um, it's true that using cryptocurrencies has the potential to help so many of these people, again, who have no access to banking systems who have no daily or weekly reach to their local bank. And of course, when looking at countries that are suffering from financial crisis, big and small, I think looking at what's going on today in the world, whether it's Turkey, Venezuela, or Zimbabwe, that's where we're seeing people that are turning to cryptocurrencies as a way to ensure that their pension, that their salary, that their how it worked money is secure in, in a way. When financial crisis obviously hit these, these regions, you know, the local currencies plunge or skyrocket depends on the situation. And this is causing panic and this is leading to terrible situations. But I think also not, not only during times of crisis do we see um, developing countries looking at blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. And I think when we're looking at people that are not registered and we're, when we look at people that might have assets under their name that are not traditional assets, but maybe they have a farm, maybe they have some cattle, maybe they do have different assets that the government or other institutions are not re recording them as assets, but with blockchain technology, you can have them registered in a digital way and as a digital asset, actually. 